Okay, so I have to re... I'm moving my spider. So basically, I know it's not fish related, but I just thought that this would be really cool to video because... I've got bad light in my house. Sorry about that, guys. Here, look. You can see down into the burrow that she made. Maybe I can turn the light on in the middle. Nice. There, you can see how she had it, and it went all the way under here. All the way around the front. All the way into here. And there's what she is. She's a curly hair tarantula. I actually didn't get this one from Petco. I got it from a friend of mine. Uh, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but he'll make a comment if he wants y'all to know, I'm sure. And so basically, she's been in here for probably like six months. And she's just completely, she went over all my decorations and all my wood. And she made this big fat mat. And I just thought that that is so cool and it's why it's taken me so long to move her into this other enclosure because i just didn't want to mess up all this cool crap that she had made like i couldn't have made this myself i mean i tried and then she completely redid it and i think that that's awesome but i needed all these wood pieces to put in the new enclosure so i'm gonna use this because i got it from someone else for really cheap and I put the hydro balls see because this one doesn't have a drainage layer but because you see how she went all the way underneath um I put a layer of that that I use for my plants here so hopefully she won't pull that up and try and dig into the balls because that would ruin my whole thing here but it's about the same amount of soil it's well i mean i tore it up but it's still pretty comparable to what it was because it was only about this deep before she had dug it up and put it all into a pile in the corner so this one i have it more sloped so that may not have been the best idea i already put in some springtails you can see them crawling around um which is good because the other one it didn't have springtails at the start so there was a lot of mold. So I've actually been meaning to redo this for a long time. But the springtails ate almost all the mold. But you can still see that, that this white stuff here, whatever that is, it's nowhere near as bad as it was. It's actually kind of yellow. But it is still pretty bad. So that's the mold that has been worrying me. Um, I tried to do some research on what types of mold are bad for tarantulas. Because I hear some tarantulas say that it's not a harmful mold or this or that but then I'm like what is a harmful mold and I guess maybe I just haven't looked in the right source or spent enough time on that but basically I just feel like if there's mold in the tank it's probably not great another reason that it took me so long is because it's just like she made this whole I already said that she but she made this whole web and um I don't know, because I always read in books that spiders, like true spiders, that they will eat their web to reabsorb the silk so that they can make more web without expending a lot of energy. And since she wasn't preparing to move, it's not like I gave her an eviction notice or something, then I felt like if she doesn't eat all of her silk, then how will she make more webs? But... No one, like, I went, then I just watched a whole bunch of tarantula rehousing videos to kind of, from a whole bunch of different people, um, and just to kind of, like, figure out what they do, and they don't seem to give a crap about their webs. They just are like, yeah, new house, here you go, like, whatever. So I just tried to get accustomed to that mentality that it's not like a one-of-a-kind, well, it is a one-of-a-kind creation, but it's not like she won't just make another web once she gets into a new house. And if the new house doesn't have mold and is taller because she always wants to climb, but because she stuck it up so deep, then she's always just on the roof. So even though this does have screen enclosure, which I didn't really think about that, I guess we'll just have to see if it's an issue because this is actually as I'm recording this video, that's the first time that I remembered that the reason I use this glass screen 
uh, excuse me, enclosure was because um, everyone says that screen is really bad. But if it's too much of an issue or I see her up there too often, then I can just replace how the lid is and I don't think it'll be an issue. But yeah, she buried these things so long ago, but you know, um, I'm pretty sure that that's right. It's, it's always just like in the right range that I just put the sticker on there because I think that other people that come over, it's nice for them to know. And plus, if I forget like a minor parameter because I have all of my other animals, then I can just glance at the sticker and it'll give me a general idea. So same thing with this one over here. It's weird because once I at first, whenever I had it set up, it was really difficult to get it to stay at the right humidity. I'd have to mist it every single day. But I guess the right amount of moisture and plants and all that or whatever in there and the moss and everything because now it's just always the right humidity. And I was worried that it was just the gauge messing up, but I put in a different gauge just to try it out and they were reading the same. So I guess it's just right because he just needs like 70 to 80% up there. Look at all the springtails crawling on this. Uh, that's kind of gross. Well, the I need to change the water, but I'll just set it in there because it has springtails on it. And I don't really want to set the springtails on my floor. If you want to see some springtails, though, check this out. You'll think it's cool. Yeah. That's what a colony looks like when you really should have split it like a week and a half ago. But... Smells not too bad, which is good. That's how I know that it's not being overfed. Here's my other one. Which this one's finally getting to the point where it needs to be split too. I was getting worried for that one because it took it a long time to actually establish. And I'm getting really sidetracked now because my phone, this is a new phone, so I have, don't have any information on it at all yet. So it's letting me um, record for a long time. Here's my microworms. Some isopods some more plants in there but back to the subject because i don't know how long this phone will let me record for um we've almost got all the stuff unburied the, some of the stuff i feel like i haven't seen it in so long but yeah anyway she's molted about five or six times since i've owned her which when he gave her to me i thought that she was basically full grown and if you're wondering why there's a piece of carbon in there, it's because that's what I'd put the springtails on. But then she put web over top of it, and then I couldn't pull it out. So it was just life from that point onward. Okay, here's a bone. And the reason that I have to clean this whole thing out is because I have all of these Endler um, guppies oops, in there and in that container that's behind them in the blue. And so... They're in too small of a tank, basically, because I'm trying to get them to breed, but it's not really even like I have too many of them for those sizes of tanks. It's really just the females can't get away from the males, so I have to pair them off individually so that they don't get stressed out from aggression, and I just don't feel like dealing with that kind of nonsense right now. I'd rather just be more natural and established. Look at all the springtails in here. And that's also why it's like, ew, like what even... Yeah, that's a mold patch. That was some. I need to make sure that I don't touch the other stuff after that. I need to rinse all this stuff now that I mentioned that. I should probably rinse. Pro advice, I guess, rinse this stuff if it came out of mold before you put it in another enclosure if you don't want mold in it. But then again, I do have all the springtails, so I guess it wouldn't matter. Except for they really didn't seem to want to eat this, whatever this is. They didn't really want to eat that because that hasn't really disappeared much at all. But... I think that we got everything out of it now, and I'm going to dump all of this dirt probably into that bucket, and then I have a bunch of sand, and like I've been soaking a piece of wood in that bucket, which I guess I can show you. I can't believe I've got a video that's almost 10 minutes long, and it's not cut out on recording it. So here's my bucket of doo-doo. It's just whatever I don't want in my fish tank, not fish, because that would be kind of savage. But honestly, they'll probably be fine because I've tested this water before and this is a, like a completely established and with a nitrogen cycle fish tank, even though it's just a five gallon bucket that I have been throwing plant shrimp and snails into for like several months and just topping off with my water change water, which is another thing why it's like completely side point. It's really impressive what you can do 
if you take time and experiment a little bit, which is kind of why I made this YouTube channel because that's more the kind of stuff I want to talk about. But um, it's not usual that I can actually make a video that's this long for you guys to see. And, like, look at all this that's grown in here. I threw just, like, a little strand of this in there. Who even knows how long ago? And the snails don't like to eat this. This they won't eat. They will eat this. This, I have so much of it that I don't really care. Um, but that, they will eat it because I don't put usually any food in this tank. So you can be mad at me if you want to about how the snail shells look. But I kind of forgot about that kind of stuff. But you can see, you can see what better than I can see all the stuff that's down in there. Oh, wow, it looks like there's little bugs or something. Whoa, what is all that? There's little craps jumping around. Damn, what is that? Well, I guess it's another thing for me to research. I wish I could use that as a learning experience for you, but that's a learning experience for me. I don't have any idea what those are. Um, but there's definitely little white things jumping around almost like springtails but they're way smaller they're like brown oh my god they're everywhere that's crazy well anyway there's only snails like this in here and i was gonna throw a bunch of eggshells because i realized that i might be being a little bit savage but i also just give these to people for their puffer fish but maybe it's still important that they have good calcium if it's for the puffer fish so their shell is hard so fair enough fair enough but, yeah, I have just just little bits of stuff that fell in here, and I just didn't even know that it fell in here, and now it's grown into all these, like, crazy little plants because they get caught up in this weed, and they fall in. Well, that's frog bit, not duckweed, but whatever. Um, Yeah, so basically, the only other update that I have right now is, I wonder if they'll show up. I have these little fish in here. There's one. Yeah, there's two of them, and a green shrimp. But basically, these I have no idea what fish these are, so if you knew, that would be cool, but I doubt you could tell because of how small they are right now. There it is. It's over there. But um, I have no idea what type of fish they are, but they came out of a tank at Petco, and they were impossibly small. They're definitely not guppies or live bears. I've had these fish for like two weeks and they still are noticeably growing you can see they have blue eyes um they're still noticeably growing but when i got them you could only even tell that there were fish in the tank because the water the filter was turned off and something was in the water where there was no tank or no fish in the tank but anyways i'm gonna cut this off so i can finish setting up the tarantula's enclosure and maybe i'll give an update on that once it's all put together. So, thanks for watching. Bye.